Hey everybody, it's Good Heart Kids. Hi kids, your adventure today awaits in the story, Olivia the Ballerina. Rosie will be reading this story that was taken from the book Olivia 5-Minute Stories, which is based on the TV series Olivia as seen on Nickelodeon. Hi kids, I'm Rosie. Welcome to Storytime. In today's story, Olivia decides that she wants to be a prima ballerina like Penelope Twinkletoes. I've always wanted to be a prima ballerina too! Maybe I can learn something from Olivia in the story! I think there may be a few things to learn. Let's read. Olivia the Ballerina Olivia and the other ballerinas in her class were lined up at the ballet bar, carefully practicing their pilates. It was time for Miss Melanie to recite the motto of the famous prima ballerina, Penelope Twinkletoes, just like she did at the end of every class. The secret to becoming a wonderful ballerina is to eat, sleep, and dream ballet. I wish I could spend the entire day at ballet class, Olivia told Francine. You know what would be even better? Ballet class all day, every day. Oh, I don't know, replied Francine. I love ballet too, but think of all the other fun stuff you wouldn't get to do. Olivia couldn't imagine anything she would rather be doing than ballet. She decided it was time to take Penelope Twinkletoe's motto more seriously. In order to become a prima ballerina like Penelope Twinkletoe's, I have to eat, sleep, and dream ballet. That means I can't even stop thinking about ballet from now on, Olivia told her mom later that day. Okay, Olivia, replied her mother, but can you start after you've taken William out for a walk? He's getting a little fussy, and he needs a walk before his nap. Olivia decided there was no reason why she couldn't do both things at once take William for a walk, and think about ballet. So after tucking William into his stroller, Olivia took him for a very special ballet walk down the street. One, two, three steps on my tippy toes, and stop and pilate. <coughs> Olivia, what took you so long? asked Mother when Olivia returned home a while later. Sorry, Mom. But I had to practice walking on my tippy toes, Olivia explained. Plus, I had to stop to do a pilate after every three steps. But it was worth it because I never once stopped thinking about ballet the whole time. That night at dinner, Olivia had a wonderful idea. Let's speak French at the table tonight, Olivia told her family. Penelope Twinkletoes speaks French. So if I speak French too, then I will be thinking like a real prima ballerina. Father decided to give it a try. He cleared his throat and said, Passez-moi le meatloaf, s'il vous plaît. You like meatloaf? Ian asked, scratching his head. You want gravy for your meatloaf? Olivia guessed. Father explained that he asked them to please pass the meatloaf. Olivia frowned. This was not going according to plan at all. The next day at school, Mrs. Hogenmuller read a story to the class. Once upon a time, there was a boy who had magic beans, she began. Excuse me? Olivia asked, raising her hand. Is this story about ballet? No, Olivia, replied Mrs. Hogenmuller. This is a story about a boy and magic beans. As Mrs. Hogenmuller continued reading, Olivia began thinking about ballet anyway. And they lived happily ever after, said Mrs. Hogenmuller as she closed the book. Now for homework tonight, please think about the three things you like best about this story. We will talk about it tomorrow. Then the bell rang and school was over for the day. It was time for soccer. 
Today, Olivia's team would be playing against the Webster School Wallabies, their biggest soccer rivals. Come on, Olivia, said Francine. You're goalie today. You get to wear the red jersey. Whoosh! A ball zoomed toward the net. Olivia dived for it and caught it. Her teammates cheered. Olivia really loved being goalie. But then she realized she wasn't thinking about ballet. Then she had a brilliant idea. Instead of diving to catch the ball, she would practice her ballet leaps. Olivia stood in first position waiting for the next ball to head for the goal. She didn't have to wait very long. Soon a ball came zooming toward her. Olivia raised her arms over her head and gracefully leaped toward the ball and missed it. For the rest of the game, Olivia missed every single shot. The other team scored 10 goals and won the game. The next day at school, Olivia apologized to her teammates for not doing a great job as a goalie. They understood, telling her that everyone has a bad game sometimes, but Olivia still felt bad about letting her team down. Okay, class, said Mrs. Hoggenmuller. Let's talk about the story I read yesterday. Olivia, can you tell me your three favorite parts of the story? Sure, replied Olivia happily. She loved being called on in class. But then she realized that she didn't know what the story was about because she had been daydreaming about ballet. Olivia, repeated Mrs. Hoggenmuller. I'm sorry, I don't know, Olivia said sadly. After class was over, Olivia told Mrs. Hoggenmuller that she was sorry and explained why she was daydreaming about ballet. And so, you see, I have to think about ballet all the time if I want to be a famous prima ballerina when I grow up, Olivia finished. I don't know about that, said Mrs. Hoggenmuller. I wanted to be a teacher when I was your age, but I didn't spend every moment thinking about it. I still did things that had nothing to do with teaching. And look at me now. Olivia looked carefully at Mrs. Hoggenmuller. She was definitely a teacher. Maybe there was a way to still be a prima ballerina, even if she didn't think about ballet all the time. And then she had an idea. A perfect idea. Olivia decided that she would simply w wear her ballet outfit all the time. She could wear it while walking William, while paying attention in class, or while playing soccer. She really could wear it anywhere. So, Mom, that's why I have to sleep in my tutu. Olivia explained to her mother later that night. Mother smiled as she pulled the covers up over Olivia's chin. Good night, ballerina Olivia. Wow, Olivia really took the prima ballerina idea too far. I'd say so, Shelby. I'm glad Olivia's teacher, Mrs. Hoggenmuller, helped her realize that she didn't really have to eat, sleep, and dream ballet all the time in order to become a wonderful ballerina. Kids, if you enjoyed the story about Olivia the ballerina today, please hit the like button. And in the comments below, tell me what you'd like to be when you grow up. Thank you for joining us for our story today. We hope to see you again soon. If you liked the story, hit the subscribe button below. If you click the bell icon beside it, we will let you know when we have a new video for you to watch. See you soon!